thousand naira per month. What huh. do we need to get out of this point? Of so this the, they, of pay, point? they pay a token to use the facility, so they don't have I mean, they, they won't have to invest in. Uh, machinery. You don't have to invest in machinery. You mm. come in and produce whatever you're producing. If you sell for, if you sold for ten naira, government takes hundred naira to keep the facility running. I think there are a number of. I don't think there's a silver bullet. I think there are a number of different interventions. Primarily, one is we we need to continue to enhance the operating environment. So policy-wise, streamlining taxes, streamlining levies, I think is a critical one. Helping people set up businesses is critical. Protecting the rights of investors and lenders is critical. Um, and I think that those are things that at the state and federal level are, are things that are being worked on. Now to talk about tech parks, innovation parks, clusters, etc. I think it's also important to recognize what kind of jobs are we trying to create. Um, so if you think about how economies progress, they move from purely agrarian economies, then they become industrialized, then they move into services. We've got to ask ourselves, what kind of jobs are we trying to create? I, I think it will be a mix of... But where are we? Maybe we should look at where is Nigeria now. Okay. We're not agrarian. Okay. We're not purely agrarian. Let me use... Not we're, purely, not, we're not industrializing we're not, we're not, either. We're not industrializing. So <laughs> where are we at now? I think, <laughs> I, think <that> we're, <laughs> I think that we're at a place where, honestly, um, I think we're, we have a five, maybe ten year window um, to either make or break this story. Uh, I think that we're at a place where clearly there's there's a general consensus that our dependence on mining revenues, especially oil revenues, is now a thing of the past. Um, I think it's important to recognize that there's a growing base of technology entrepreneurs in the country. I think there's a growing base of tech skills um, in, in, in especially Lagos. Uh, if you take, for example, the Yaba Corridor in Lagos, it's now home to businesses like Paga and Della. I mean, if you look at the co-creation hub, you there's a lot of great work going on, going on out there. I think that we're clearly one of the leading tech cities in, in Africa. So if you take Lagos, Nairobi, maybe Johannesburg, um, those are the three major tech cities in Africa. So I think that there's clearly an opportunity to leverage technology, um, and especially mobile technology, with, especially with the mobile telephony penetration in, in, in the country. So if I were to, if you were to put a gun to my head, I'd say that, we need to start thinking, how do we enable this, these jobs in technology? And one of the things that Lagos State is doing, for example, is trying to bring uh, coding to children at early stages. And I think it's also a curriculum conversation. So I hear things about attitude, I hear things about uh, personal attributes, etc. I think that it's also important that we start teaching some of these um, soft skills uh, and in infuse that into our curriculum. Which he had and, mentioned earlier. And expose, and expose especially expose young, young, young students to entrepreneurship. So if you think about business clubs, for example, um, it's a great way to introduce at secondary school level the concept of entrepreneurship um, and their internships to, to students. Mr. Yabada, you, you talked about helping people set up businesses. I think that is a major challenge in this country because of the um, accessibility to funds to set up businesses. Banks are not loaning monies to anybody. Banks only want to give you money if you can return the money in, nine, in, in, in three months. And what business can you start up, nurture, to make profit enough to, refund, to repay the Pay bank in three months? 22%. So, uh, 20, 25. So, great question. <laughs> um, I work for an agency of the Lagos State Government. It's called the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. Uh, one of our major objectives is to help bridge that gap. So we provide, for example, concessionary loans to micro, small, and medium enterprises of not more than 5 million naira at 5% per annum. We also include a moratorium period um, for these businesses. So for micro businesses who can take up to 500,000, uh, they'll have a moratorium of three months. Viewers, uh, did you hear that? At 5%. Please pay attention. Uh, they'll have a moratorium <laughs> of up to three months, uh, and the loans are payable over 12 months. For, my, for small to medium enterprises who can access up to 5 million naira, uh, they have a moratorium of six months, and the loans are payable over a three-year period. Okay. Now, it's not just now that. Talking. It's not just that. What we've also done is that we're also partnering with selected financial institutions. So we had a public tender, uh, financial institutions put in their bid, and we asked for them to demonstrate their capabilities with lending to micro, small, and medium enterprises, etc. We've now picked a, a, a set of partners, and apart from lending through those partners, part of what we're doing is also help those partners build capacity. 
because there's also the need to help the banks build capacity to understand how to lend to MSMEs. But on our side, apart from lending to those businesses, we also then support them with, with some technical skills. So we'll train them, so there's some financial literacy training that has to happen at the micro level, uh, but we'll also use business development partners to ensure that these businesses formalize and are able to create permanent jobs. Now we think that if we do all of these things we've said over the next three years, uh, we should be able to add up to a million jobs to to, uh, to the Lagos state's uh, economy. And I mean, if you think about that, it, it doesn't look sound like a lot of jobs, mm. uh, but that's just one organization of government. And there are many other things that will enable job creation in Lagos state and ultimately Nigeria. Okay. okay. Femi, you are the analyst here. So you have the artisan, you have the technocrat, and you have a resource person who is also an author. Yeah. And all, of, all the things they are saying, building capacity, creating hubs, attitudinal change. Where does all of this come into the mix? Tie up. Um, but it, it, it's interesting that, um, you know, pretty much everyone is agreeing on the same thing, but we're all coming from different direction. Um, just like you mentioned about the Lagos State and Employment Trust Fund, they've done a lot of work. Um, from the human resource angle, they talked about um, the I unemployment rates and all the issues attached and then we're talking about artisans. Now the coexistence, right, and productivity of all this mix is our ability to actually formalize where we want to get to and what we want to be noted for as a country. We could say we want to do three or four things, right? So we look at internal power generation. I'm not talking of electrical power for <laughs> again <laughs> internal capacity, you know, building. And we can focus on, okay, we would like to develop this area in terms of business environment and, you know, business uh, environment uh, con 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 being conducive. And then we can also talk about, okay, we want to be self-sufficient along this line, this line, this line. Then we can now say, okay, internationally and positioning ourselves wise, especially with respect to youth employment, what do we want to be known for? What we, do we want to train the skills for? Um, there's a big problem with the country generally, and that is the fact that we seem to follow trends. If this is trending in this area of the world, we want to go along with it, that's trending, then we want to go along with it. Without looking internally mm. and developing structures that actually address our own issues and how we can solve our issues with what we have. Um, I think the last time I was here in the program, we we're, we're talking about a recession and, uh, and similar issues, and I, I mentioned that mentoring for instance and you know having um, um, what do you call it uh, apprenticeship program is something that has already been a part of our local tradition it's something that we already do there's a way that they were doing it over the time that people were getting employed villages were able to get young men from their own side to come to Lagos or to wherever they established where and you know learn the trade and get employment why can't we formalize things like that if whatever structure we're going to, like for the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund, for instance, if they put together the structure to empower the entrepreneurs, right, that are already doing the business, what about those who are unemployed? Because that's the key issue, you know, the mm -hmm. reason we're here. Mm -hmm. What about those who are unemployed? Now, is there an apprenticeship program, aside from a training and, you know, formal capacity training program, is there an apprenticeship program that creates a leverage position that you must take in like 10 people? and treat them along this line, which is part of the reason you're benefiting from this service. You're right. It leverages the position, bringing their own capacity building right, with a part of, you know, attitude. So people like the artisans, for instance, they know themselves, right? We can now say, fine, this is what we are trying to define ourselves fashion-wise. We don't want to do everything for everybody. We want to be known as the country that does Ankara in West Africa, and we want to have Lagos, you know, fashion show. These are the things that we are focused on. I want to say, for this country, we are into banana production. And these are the things we want to achieve. These are the milestones that we want to set. Except we put some of this structural thinking, you know, and make them into policy initiatives and drive them through. We are unlikely to, you know, get to the end. At the end of the day, we will be in similar stages we've been in, uh, which is some of these issues might become politicized. It'll be viewed that, oh, Lagos State is only people that they know that they're going to give money. You'll probably hear that, uh, you know, sure, along sure, the line. Sure. Um, some people will say, no, there is no job. Government has not supported us, like the HR man said. So if government is not supporting us, we don't have any of this. But the government can't do it. The artisans will say, no, they're not coming back to us. They're not giving us jobs. 
the right structure will link everything in just much like the simple way that I've just presented it and create employment down the line because what is important mm -hmm. if you want to increase uh, you know e employment uh, anywhere in the world is that it must have a trickle down in effect okay. okay. well, well, when we come back where does a Greek fit into all this it seems to be the biggest word right now we'll be right back